So I want us to talk about care homes. In particular, how much it costs to stay in one. But first, listen to this clip from someone that I interviewed a week ago. My father lives in a home, £6,000 a month they take from his savings. 6,000 a month and the care is diabolical. Yeah. So you know when you hear something, but it doesn't quite register straight away? Well, that's exactly what happened to me. I was driving home and I suddenly thought, that guy's dad is paying the best part of 72,000 pounds a year just to live. That can't be right, can it? And if it is, the cost is obscene, or is it? If you or someone you know is in this situation, please share your experiences, as I'd be really interested to know how you're dealing with this. Because I don't know anything about the care home world, I decided to do some research, but what I found out was truly shocking. So stick around to the end to hear my results. And also, please, could you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. So it turns out that in the UK, how much you pay for your care depends on what type of care you need, where you live, your savings, the properties you own, and the care home provider. You're gonna to have to go through a financial assessment. It's called a means test. Now that means test is carried out by your local council and they are gonna go through um, how much capital you have, what money do you have in the bank, your assets, and based on their findings, that will affect your care home fees. They're gonna check the price of your home, your private and your state pensions, your savings, even the interest that you earn on those savings. They are really going to make sure that they cover all the angles, which I suppose they have to do, that makes perfect sense. So if you've got loads of money and assets, you are going to be paying um, all the costs yourself and you're referred to as a self-funder. If you don't have that much money or you've been very good at hiding it, the local authority will help you with some or all of the costs. In a care home, nursing care understandably is more expensive than just residential care. Now these are the figures that blew my mind. The UK average cost of residential care if you are a self-funder, is £1,160 per week. While the average nursing home cost, if you're funding it yourself, is £1,410 per week in the UK, obviously. So your monthly average costs for residential care is £4,640, quid, while nursing care is going to cost you about £5,640. Quid. But just imagine, that's going to be about 70 grand every year. I don't know about you, but that's going to burn a big hole in your savings very, very quickly. Now, care homes that provide specialist care, such as dementia care, they will charge an even higher fee, which I can totally understand. Now, residential dementia care, on average, costs 1,200 a week, and nursing dementia care costs um, just under 1,500 a week. So care homes in London are much more expensive than care homes in the northwest or the southwest of the country. Now the savings threshold is different depending on where in the country you live. But if you have more than the upper capital limit, you've got to pay full care home fees. If care is being funded by your local authority, but the cost of the care home exceeds this, a third party, such as a relative, can pay the remaining cost. This is known as a top-up fee. Now, after researching this, I realised that that £6,000 initially mentioned is actually quite normal. But is it, is it, is it, is it normal? <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel like it's still just obscenely expensive. I say I'm not trying to be disrespectful to people that run care homes. They do an amazing job and what they do is so important for the care for our elderly ones. It's just the cost that is blowing me away, that it just seems crazy that we are punishing our elderly ones with such a cost. I mean, maybe it's just me, I don't know, but 
I just think that it is absolutely insane the amount of money it costs to look after our elderly ones when maybe they're not in a position to be able to do it anymore. But the, the gentleman I interviewed, Mr. Hunter, he also said... A lot of countries look after the family element. We've lost, we've lost that degree of driving the family element, looking after our elders, yeah. the children looking after mm -hmm. the elders, look, living together in a family group. All very, very good things that happened in the past. Yeah. So my question to you is this. Is this an accurate representation of life today? Is the idea of the extended family finished? Are we failing our elders? It's sad to say that many people today believe that our society's emphasis on individualism and independence has led us to prioritise our needs and our desires over those of our elders. We are encouraged to focus on our careers, relationships, personal goals, often leaving little time or energy to devote to our ageing relatives. And in a globalised world where we live in, more and more families live further away, sometimes in a different country. So that support network that once existed within you know, families, it's, it's weakened, if not gone. And also the pressures of modern life, such as financial instability, work stress and societal expectations can make it difficult for individuals to prioritise the care for their elders. Now, it's all too easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of daily life, forgetting to check on our ageing parents or our grandparents, you know, uncles, aunties, um, who might be struggling because they're on their own. Now, it will be good for us if we remember that our elders are not burdens to be passed off to others. They are treasures of wisdom, experience and love. They deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. And they need to be listened to and valued because they've got so much to give. Now, if you're still here, I thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Please hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.